This video is going to focus on mesh generation inside SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. Uh, this isn't a beginner overview, but there are some of those linked in the description below if you'd like to see how to set up a flow simulation project. So in this video we'll be going over how to plot the mesh refinement inside flow simulation, uh, a lot of the options that pertain to the global mesh and its default automatic mode. We'll go over how to place local mesh refinements where we need them, the manual mode that's available for global mesh, and then review and tips. And there's timestamps in the description if you want to jump ahead to any of these sections. Over in SOLIDWORKS I have a flow simulation project created and I can generate the mesh with the default conditions by right clicking on the mesh and choosing to create it and this will run the solver in just the mesh mode which will pop up a separate solver window and eventually I'll get some information about how many cells were generated broken down into total, fluid, solid, and partial cells. To investigate this mesh, I can access my results, which are labeled Mesh Only. Within here, I can right-click on the Mesh icon to insert a mesh refinement plot. So I'll just choose a plane as a reference, and then offset it so it's going through an interesting part of the geometry, and this will be color-coded by refinement level by default. So when I click the check mark, I'll be able to see the mesh that's generated. Now right away if you're used to other simulation software you might notice that this mesh looks very different. Flow simulation uses a cartesianal mesh system so we're always going to get these box shaped cells dividing up the computational domain. And we have what's known as the basic mesh which is essentially corresponding to refinement level zero, these blue squares that you see there. Then we have a number of conditions that can perform automatic refinement. So we can see the cells that are at refinement level 1 and refinement level 2. It's important to remember that all this is happening in 3D. So even though we're just looking at a slice of the mesh right now, this is occurring through our whole model. Because every refinement occurs from subdivision, each refinement represents an 8 times increase in the number of cells from the previous level and we can access information like the number of cells by right clicking on the results folder and going to the summary. Now let's look at the options that are in the global mesh. So if I go and edit definition on the global mesh, you can see that the default mode is automatic and we're set to a level 3 mesh by default. We can also check a checkbox in here to show the basic mesh. You can see that as I increase this slider, the refinement of the basic mesh also increases. So a really basic level of mesh refinement that you could do would just be to go into the global mesh settings and maybe crank up the slider a couple notches. If I were to rerun the study like this, we would see this as the result where the level 5 mesh yields additional refinement. There's also an option called minimum gap size that can be enabled within the global automatic mesh and allows you to type in a distance such as the 2 millimeter distance between these heatsink fins. This will place in even more refinement and try to resolve gaps of that size. It also ends up placing cells in a lot of locations that may not be ideal. So it's not going to be the most optimized mesh necessarily. Something we can do if we really want to focus in on refining a particular area is to specify a local mesh. Let's take a look at how to do this inside the software. To add a local mesh refinement, I'll right click on the mesh icon and choose insert local mesh. Now I can choose components, faces, or edges to apply a local mesh refinement to. In this case, I'm going to choose this heatsink since this is my primary area of interest. There's many options for performing refinement, such as advanced refinement options for small solid features and curvature. However, the one I'm most interested in is channel refinement. And you can think of channels as, again, small gaps. So for the spaces between the heatsink fins, 
it'll try to perform additional refinement there. And the way this works is we can enter a desired number of cells across the channel. I'm going to set that to 5. And then a maximum refinement level. I'm going to set this to 4. This means that flow simulation will use up to level 4 refinement in order to try to hit 5 cells in between the channels. And only in the area of this local mesh. Now I'll right click and recreate the mesh. And here you can see the result which gives less cells total than we had with using the minimum gap size option, but much more refinement in our area of interest. So local mesh are a very valuable way to selectively refine regions of your model. There are some other ways to define these too, so let's take a look at those. I can model a part in the assembly that will represent a region that I want to perform refinement on. Then over in flow simulation, I can specify a local mesh and choose this component using the flyout feature tree. Now it's worth noting that currently flow simulation thinks this is a solid and that block would completely interrupt the flow. But by checking disable solid components, this will allow me to use this body for a local mesh refinement and still have the flow go right through it. You can also disable components for other purposes, such as extracting results from a particular location. So this can work like any other mesh control, but I want to show some different refinement methods. So I'm going to uncheck Channels and Advanced Refinement. And I'm going to set all of these refinement cells to level 4, so we can see what they do. This is going to refine the fluid, solid, and fluid solid boundary cells. You can see the result on the screen here where we just get a block of cells that are completely at the defined refinement level. So you can think of this as a method to get absolute control over refinement that you want in certain areas, although it's not necessarily going to be the most efficient. Let's suppose I also want to place a local mesh on the other pack of RAM modules over on the left side. I don't have to remodel a new body to do that. I can go in and insert a local mesh and choose the second option for region, which will let me choose from a primitive type body that I can on the fly drag and reposition. So I just need to size this to the region I want to refine. And on this side, I'm going to do the same thing where I uncheck any other refinement besides the refining cells. But in this case, I'm just going to set the fluid solid boundary to level 4. This is one of my favorite options because this should refine just the exterior faces of the solids that are inside here. You can see on this screen the results that that would produce on the left hand side, where the refined mesh hugs the model a little bit closer. The only difference between these two local mesh are that the one on the left has the fluid solid boundary set to 4, and the one on the right has all the refining cells set to 4. Finally, I want to talk about some of the manual options that are available in the global mesh. If I edit the global mesh, you'll see that we do have the ability to access this manual mode. When switched to manual, we'll see a whole lot more options, including the refinement types that were available to us in the local mesh. So we can see the refinements that are being performed by default. We can also see the number of cells across the computational domain in the X, Y, and Z region. So although I typically recommend automatic mode, if you really want to understand the way the mesh is generated, you could uncheck these other refinement methods and manually control the number of cells across this basic mesh or computational domain by adjusting these numbers. Let's suppose I uncheck all the other refinement types and generate the mesh as manual. With no other local mesh or other refinement specified, this will give me exactly what I expect, which is the basic mesh size, or my initial number of cells across the domain, is the mesh that gets generated. Now you can see that flow simulation supports having partial cells, or having cells that are larger than your small solid features. This is another big difference between flow simulation and other simulation packages.
if you have tiny little details in your model that you don't want to incorporate, it's not inherently necessary to suppress those, although it's a very good idea, because using a sufficiently large cell size will basically ignore those effects. On the flip side, it's important that we refine areas of interest enough. Let's look at some of the things we can do with the manual mesh. So I'll edit definition here. And let's say I drastically increase the number of cells. So I'm going to check this checkbox to keep aspect ratio and set this up to 40. And we can see the type of effect that this has. And we'll see that now everything is still at a refinement level zero, but the cells that we're starting with are a lot smaller. So now if I go to place in any refinements, such as turning up the refining cells for my solid and fluid solid boundary, this should yield a pretty refined cell size. So on a small example like this, I can get away with turning up those refining cells globally, but on more complex assemblies, you'll likely want to rely on local mesh regions to do that. Show more practical example here. This is the full assembly that that little cut down version was pulled from, but I just want to show you the level of uh, mesh refinement that I used for this, you know, kind of first pass here. Um, and this was all done using uh, setting a local mesh refinement with channel refinement around these heat sinks. You'll see there's only about a cell or two between the fins, and I'd really say that's probably the bare minimum to just resolve the heat sinks. Um, so it seemed like, you know, because we have that partial cell technology that can uh, resolve things that are smaller than the cell size. Uh, everything seemed to make sense in terms of the temperature distributions and everything like that. And I could basically confirm that the study is functioning properly. Um, and this is all with, if I go and load the result summary, just under 500,000 cells for a pretty complicated assembly. And out, from memory, I think this takes about 10 or 15 minutes to solve as a steady state problem. So a great way to uh, vet out the setup. And then if we wanted to really go at the refinement, I have a refined version here, and if I activate that, you can see that it's got at least four or five cells in between the fins. And again, this was just done with the, if I edit one of these local meshes, so you can see, it's just selecting those components and setting the uh, number of cells across the channel and the max level raising that up to level five in this case. So this produced a mesh that's actually up around 5 million cells, which is probably the most that my computer would be able to run, you'll ultimately be limited in terms of RAM uh, with how many cells you can have inside the solution. So the more RAM you have, the more cells your PC should be able to handle. Finally, there are a couple other methods for mesh refinement that we didn't talk about. One is an equidistant local mesh. This is an option you can turn on to allow you to generate shells or layers of certain refinement levels at certain offset distances off the model. This is really useful for aerodynamic problems such as the airfoil here. We also have a capability for solution adaptive refinement. This is enabled through the calculation control options and you can see an example here where after a certain period of time in the solution the solver can automatically place in additional cells and put the refinement exactly where it's needed. We have a blog article that covers this process that's linked in the description. By the way, if you want to learn even more about meshing inside flow simulation, you can access the technical reference from HELP, SOLIDWORKS Simulation, and the Flow Simulation Technical Reference. This contains a lot of background information about flow and many sections specifically on mesh refinement. In review, some tips I'd recommend would be to start with a coarse mesh until you get your project running. It's easy to perform refinement later on. And if you're not sure how much refinement you need, you can always clone the project and see if the results are changing as the mesh is refined. Recreate the mesh frequently and use the refinement plots so you can observe the effects of the individual changes that you're making. Use local mesh controls where it makes sense to place refinement in the areas you need them.
and you can always use the global mesh in manual mode for complete control. Hopefully you found this video helpful and let us know in the comments section what type of content you'd like to see next.